Hello everybody. Welcome back to Morrowind. My name is Verax. This is Karish, and we are currently in the Firewatch Guild of Mages. Now last time I said that I'd do a let's discuss slash let's read video uh, in between this episode and last one. And I didn't. Uh, I kind of forgot slash couldn't be bothered slash was doing other things. So what I'm going to do is do it now. So this is a long video as you can see. So the first part is going to be me me reading this. Well, well, maybe these skill books at least. And um, I know. Then I'll continue the, the 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 LP as normal. So if you don't want to watch me read stuff, I can understand that. I will put a timestamp in the video about now and the description as well, so you can skip to where the action actually starts, where we uh, where I decide what I'm going to do from now on. But for now. I'm just going to read some stuff. Uh, so, let's start with the books in our inventory, shall we? We have a couple. Hanging Gardens. Oh yeah, this one we can't read. Response to Barrow's speech. On the 14th of last steed, an illusionist by the name of Berovar Barrow gave a very ignorant speech about the Chantry of Julianos in the Imperial City. As ignorant speeches are hardly uncommon, there was no reason to respond to it. Unfortunately, he has since had the speech privately printed as Barrow's Speech to the Battle Mages, and it's received some small, undeserved attention in academic circles. Let us put this, his misconceptions to rest. Barrow began his lecture with an occasionally factual account of famous battle mages from Zurin Arctus, Tiber Septim's Imperial Battle Mage, to Yagarthan, Ural Septim VII's battle, uh, Imperial Battle Mage. His intent was to show that where it matters, the Battle Mage relies on other schools of magicka, not the school of destruction, which is supposedly a Battle, mage, uh, battle Mage's particular forte. Allow me to first dispute these so-called historical facts. Zurin Arctus did not create the Golem Nim Udium by spells of mysticism and conjuration, as Barrow alleges. The truth is that we don't know how Numidium was created, or if it was a golden, a golden golem, or Atronox of any traditional sense of these words. Uriel V Battle Mage, Hethoth, was not an Imperial Battle Mage. He was simply a sorcerer in the employ of the Emperor Empire. Thus, which spells he cast in the various battles on Akavia are irrelevant, not to mention heresy. Barrow calls Empress Morithana's battle mage, Wallach, an accomplished diplomat, but not a powerful student of the School of Destruction. I congratulate Barrow on correctly identifying an Imperial battle mage, but there are many written examples of Wallach's skill in the School of Destruction. The sage Celerus, for example, wrote extensively about Wallach casting the Vampiric Cloud on the rebellious army of Black Rose, causing their strength and skill to pass on to their opponents. What is this but an impressive example of the School of Destruction? Barrow rather pathetically includes Jagarthan in his list of un underachieving battle mages. To use an insane traitor as an example of rational behaviour is an untenable position. Why would Barrow? What would Barrow prefer? That Than use the school of discretion to destroy Tamriel by a more traditional means? Barrow uses this his misrepresentation of history as the basis for his argument. Even if he had found four excellent examples from the history of battle mages casting spells outside their school, and he didn't, he would only have anecdotal evidence, which isn't enough to support an argument. I could easily find four examples of illusionists casting healing spells, or night blades teleporting. There is a time and place for everything. Barrow's argument, built on this shaky ground, is that the school of destruction is not a true school. He calls it narrow and shallow, and as an avenue of study and its students impatient with megalomaniac tendencies. How can one respond to this? Someone who knows nothing about casting a spell destruction and criticizing the school for being too simple? Similarizing the school of destruction as learning how to, how, how to do the maximum amount of damage in the minimum amount of time is clearly absurd as he expounds on his ignorance by listing all the complicated factors studied in his own school of illusion. Allow me, in response, to list the factors studied in the School of Destruction. This means of delivering the spell... The means of delivering the spell matters more in the School of Destruction than any other school, whether it is cast out a touch, cast out a range, or in concentric circles, or cast once to be triggered later. 
what forces must be reined in to cast the spell, fire, lightning or frost, and what are the advantages and dangers of each. What are the responses from different targets to the, uh, from the assault of different spells of destruction? What are the many defences and how may, may they be assailed? What environmental factors must be taken into consideration? What are the advantages of a spell of delayed damage? Beryl suggests that the school of destruction cannot be subtle, yet he forgets about the curses that fall under the mantle of the school, sometimes affecting generation after generation in subtle yet sublime ways. The School of Alteration is a distinct and separate entity from the School of Destruction, and Barrow's argument that they should be merged into one is patently ludicrous. He insists, again, a man who knows nothing about the School of Alteration and Destruction uh, is, one, is the one insisting this, that a damage is part of the changing of reality dealt by the Spell of Alteration. The implication that the levitation to list a spell of alteration is a close cousin of a shock bolt, the spell of destruction. This would make as much sense as to say the school of alteration, being all about the actuality of change, should absorb the school of illusion, being all about the appearance of change. The he certainly isn't. Uh, didn't uh, it, it certainly it, it certainly isn't a coincidence that a matter master of the school of illusion can cast. This his attack on the school of destruction. Illusion is, after all, all about masking the truth. Mm. <clears throat> Quite a rebuttal there. Shame we didn't actually see the actual main original thing. All right, I think that's it for the ones that we have. Oh no, no, there's quite a few. Rear guard and the wolf queen. The castle would hold. No matter the forces, the walls of cast cable call would never fail. But that was a small consolation to Menegur. He was hungry. In fact, he had never been so hungry. The, the well in the atrium of the fortress supplied him with enough water to hold there until the fourth era, but his stomach reminded Menegur minute to minute that he needed food. The wagon of supplies mocked him. When his army, the forces of the King of Solitude, had left Cast Cable Hall, he had manned the battlements as the rear guard to protect their retreat. They had left a wagon behind to supply him with enough food for months. It was not until the night after they left that he suspected the ladder. He inspected the ladder and found nothing edible was in the wagon. Trunk after trunk was filled with Netch armor from the army's incursion into Morrowind. Apparently, his Nord confederates had assumed that the lightly opaque material was hard tack in aspic. If the Dunmer, whose caravan had been raided, knew, knew about this, they would never have been able to stop laughing. Menegur thought that his fellow mercenary and kinswoman Erin Erin would have found this amusing as well. She had spoken with great authority about niche leather, being an expert on all things on all sorts of light armour, but she had made a point to mention that it could not be eaten like other like other leather in occasions of hardship. It was a pity she couldn't be there to enjoy the irony, Menegur thought savagely. She had returned to Morrowind even before the king's army had left, preferring a life as a wanted fugitive to a free existence in the court of Skyrim. All the weeds in the courtyard had been devoured by the rear guard's 16th day manning Casable, Casable Hall. The entire castle had been scoured, rotten tubers in the mulch pile found and consumed, a dusty bouquet in the countess's bedchamber eaten. Almost every rat and insect in the most... Uh, but the most cunning infesting the castle walls had been racked, tracked down and gobbled up. The castle and chambers, filled with acrid edible law books, had yielded a couple of crumbs of bread. Medigar had even scraped moss from the stones. There was no denying it, he would be dead from starvation before his army returned to break the ranks of the enemies who surrounded the fortress. The worst part, said Menegur, who had taken to talking himself when only the second day alone in the castle, is how close sustenance is. The vast arbour of golden apples stretched acre after acre near the castle walls. The sunlight cast a seductive gleam on the fruit, and the cruel wind carried sweet spells to Casable to torture him. Like most Bosmer, Menegur was an archer. He was a master of long and medium distance fighting, but in close quarters as he would as he would be if he dared to leave the castle and enter the enemy camp in the arbor, he knew he would not last long. At some point he knew he would have to try, but he had been dreading the day. It was upon him now. Menegur put on the Netch armor for the first time, feeling the powdery, almost velvet texture of the rendered leather against his skin. There was also a barely perceptible throb, which he recognized as the remnant of 
Nematocysts at the Natchez venomous flesh, flesh still clinging months after its death, which uh, with domesticated poison. The combination made him feel energized. Erin had described the sensation perfectly, just as she had explained how to defend himself while wearing Natch leather armor. Under cover of night, Menegar crept out of the black gate of the castle, locking it behind him with a rather cumbersome key. He made for the arbor as quickly as he could, but passing sentry, but a passing sentry coming behind a tree saw him. Remaining calm, Menegar did as he remembered Erin had instructed, only moving after the attack had been launched. The sentry's blade glided a against the armour and knocked to the left, throwing the young man off balance. It was the trick, as he understood it, you had to be prepared to... Uh, that was the trick, as he understood it. You had to be prepared to be hit and merely move with the blow, allowing the membranous armour to divert the injury away. Use your enemy's momentum against him, as Eren used to say. Like Kung Fu! There were several more close encounters in the arbour, but each swing of an axe and each thrust of the sword found purchase elsewhere. With fistfuls of apples, Menego ran the gauntlet back to the castle. He, he locked the black gate door behind him and fell into an orgy of eating. For week after week, the Bosma stole out to gather his food. The guards began anticipating his raids, but, kept, but he kept his schedule irregular and always remembered when attacked to wait for the blow, accept it and then turn. In such a way, he lived and survived his lonely vigil at Casable Hall. Four months later, he was preparing for another seizure of apples. Meninger had, uh, when he was as he was, Meninger had loud clamour at the front gate. Surveying the group from a safe distance on the battlements, he saw the shields of the King of Solitude, his ally, uh, the Count of Casable, and their enemy, the King of Faron. Evidently, a truce had been called. Meninger opened the gates, and the combined armies flooded into the courtyard. Many of the knights of Faron sought to shake the hand of the man they had named the Shadow of Abba, expressing their admiration at his defensive skills and apologising good-naturedly for their attempts to slay him, only doing their job, you know. There's hardly an apple left on the vines, said the King of Solitude. Well, I started on the edges and went my way in, explained Menegur. I brought back extra fruit to tempt the rats out of walls so I could have a little meat as well. We spent the last several months working out the details of the truth, said the King. Really quite exhausting. In any rate, the Count will be taking back possession of this, his castle now, but there's a small detail we need to work out. You're a mercenary, and as such responsible for your own expenses. If you had been a subject of mine, things might have been different, but there are certain old rules of law that must be respected. Meninger anticipated the strike. The problem is, the King continued, you've taken a good deal of the cro Count's crops while here. Uh, while by any reasonable con computation, com Put Eation, you've eaten an amount equal to and likely exceeding your mercenaries' wages. Obviously, I would not want to penalise you for an excellent job you've done defending the castle in uncomfortable circumstances, but you agree that it's important that we observe the old rules of law, don't you? Of course, replied Benegar, accepting the blow. I'm delighted to hear that, said the king. Our estimation is that you owe the Count of Cassevel 37 imperial gold, which I would gladly pay to myself with interest after the autumn tide harvest, said Menegar. There is much left on the vine that you said much more there's more left on the vine that you suggest. The Kings of Solitude and Ferron and the Count of Casable stared at the Bosma. We agreed to bar to abide to the stricted rules of law, and I have had time to read them great many books over the time you were making your truce. In the third era, two hundred and forty six, during the reign of Uriel the Forth, the Imperial Council, in an attempt to clear up some questions of the property rights in Skyrim during these chaotic days, decreed that any man without a liege who occupied a castle for more than three months would be granted the rights and titles to that estate. It's a good law, of course, meant to discourage absent and foreign landlords, Menegur smiled, feeling the now familiar sensation of a glancing uh, strike diverting. By the rule of law, I am the Count of Casable. The Regard's son still hold the, count, uh, the title of Count of Casable. Cas Cascable, um, and he grows the finest, most delectable apples in the empire. Good. I like that. Well done, him. All right. I don't know why I saved it. Nothing's happened. We're going to continue with the sage. No, oh, it's not a skill book, and it's quite long. Never mind, then. Maybe not. If not skill books... I think I've read this one as well. That's really long as well. You'll forgive me if I don't read that either. <laughs> I think that may well do. Yeah, okay. 
If there were skill books, I would have read them, but you know, I don't want to read every book in Morrowind. Alright then! <laughs> Save it again for no reason. What's this? Okay. So, welcome to the gameplay <laughs> element of this video. Um, so, last time, I had a choice of either taking a detour or going back to the mainland to continue main quest. But there was a, a slight little thing with the Black Roses. Uh, that quest that we could have picked up here and decided at the time not to. But having thinking about it, I, I thought that maybe I would do that quest. Because... The Black Roses are not some sort of like in some swamp or whatever, and they're not just some icky mushrooms. They are used in magicka and spells and stuff. So, I think Karish would actually be quite keen in finding them. So I'm going to go and find the dude who gave me, who offered to give me that quest. Take it, and we'll have a little look you want something? further around this, uh... Where is everyone? You want something? Here we are this area here, I imagine. So who gives me the quest? Is it you? The Black Roses. Okay, go on then. I need three of the flowers. As a member of the guild, you have permission to pick the roses from the palace foyer. Protect okay, not to take those in the vases. The ones, the planters are perfectly okay to take, however. Alright, so it's just the palace then. Hmm... So the ones in the planter, but yeah, the palace foyer, hey. Okay, that's not quite as epic as I was, ho I was hoping. I was hoping, really, for... to go out into the wilds and look for them. It sounds like it's raining, but it's not. So the palace... Oh, it might be, actually. Yeah, let's put the rain there. Uh, raincoat on. So where is the pa where is the palace? Is it up there? I oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Found it. So I just have to find some flowers now, but not the ones in the pots, but the ones in the planters. Right. So I'm guessing this is a planter, and that's a pot. I'm a bit confused about which is which. Honestly, I'm gonna save it and black rose. Alright, I'm just going to take three of these then. This is quite beneath Carish, but as it's in the same freaking uh, area, you know. Yeah, alright. Well, what an epic quest. Oh my god. I picked up a flower and I can no longer move. <laughs> Come on, game. Come on. How much How much do they weigh then? 0.2. Okay. Yeah, we need to get rid of some books and stuff, I believe. Oh, maybe these are the vases. All right, these are the vases. All right, don't take them. Well, I didn't, so that's okay. Okay, we return from our epic quest. Maybe the next one will be even more awesome, though, eh? You want something? No, not from you. Yes. 50 gold. All right, that's good. A reward, thanks. You need to collect some eye star for eyes for me. Don't like the sound of that. What's an eye star? My experience, uh, my experience mean I require the three eye stars. If you can find them for me, so I'll be much light. I believe that there are several eye stars near the docks. Be careful though; they are quite dangerous if you are clumsy. What is an eye star? Do you know what an eye star is? Hmm. All right, we'll go. I'm listening. Should we have a rest? It's in the middle of the night. I don't know where to rest here. Though. Oh wait, yeah, I do. Well, yeah, that could wait. It's midnight, and we're going to uh, have a have a rest, I believe. It's midnight and it's raining, and don't particularly like going to find eye stars. Thanks very much. Let me just check the map here because I know I've been here before. So I am... Um, where am I? I'm looking here. I'm not right in the middle. Okay, that makes sense. The clothing here. The Queen's Cutlass. That will do. Yep, that sounds good to me. Right over there. 
Sorry the last episode was quite dark. I don't know why that happened. Um, it's quite light for me now. I did turn the brightness up a little bit. I don't know whether it's YouTube messing things up or whether it's something with my rendering. I'm not entirely sure. But, uh... Good. Alright. We'll get... You have no... Uh... Food at all. I buy some of that wine with that. With that. Um, oh God, I'll have it now. All right. Where where was this? Uh, here. One of these. Ooh, that's a cellar. Nice though. They've got like a a fully stocked cellar with spare tables and everything. Right. So it's not down here. Okay. Let's ignore that. All right. And this is a little sort of private function room. I like this. Hello. Latest rumours. Your septic is getting scared. Maybe even scared enough to call the garrisons from places like Firewatch to back to defend him. What will we do then? Defend yourselves. Just, just... Deal with it. Bit of table dancing as well going on. And here's the main area. I'm not keyed on this though. This is very tight. You know? If I was a drunk, you could easily, even if you weren't drunk, you can just fall down those stairs. That is asking for trouble. So a minor little defect there, I would say. 50, 50, unlocked, okay. Some, ah, oh, some writing. Message to the guests. Guests of the Queen's Cutlass, we thank you for your patronage and remind you to please leave all your belongings that are not yours in the room or you'll be faced a penalty while settling the bill. The in-house book selection is available for your reading pleasure located at the second floor foyer. Also, guests are asked to leave their keys with the bartender upon exiting the building. That is a nice little touch, that. I like that. And I believe we're going to level up. Woots. Okay. So, intelligence willpower. And I think we'll give personality a uh, bit of a boost as well, because Karish is becoming quite a bit of a likeable guy, apparently. Or at least he knows how to get what he wants. Ah, uh, it's the most amazing thing. Yesterday it was all hard, and today it's easy. It's good night's sleep, and yesterday's mysteries are today's masteries. Very true indeed. Marvelous. Yeah, there's a few little books there. It's nice. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Let's get this over with. Quick. All right, a bit of. Uh... Again, you don't have any food, do you? So a bit of breakfast, which does not include. Wine. I don't think even Carrish will bother with that. Guami. Some books, apparently. Some scuttle. Salt rice. And a muffin. Along with some risotto. Caesar's right to start the day. As we now go... Oh, God. It's still raining. To some eye. What are they? Eye, eye tyrants? Some eye, eye stalks. Let's go and find them by the docks. It's a shame that Firewatch 2 a.m. I thought I'm sure. Oh, it's I know why. It's because I rest. I must have rested until healed. There. Now it's morning and it's still raining. Fantastic. So I know full well the docks are here, I just don't know what an eye thingy is. I can't remember what they are now. It's been so long since I got the quest, I can't remember. Do you know what an eye thingy is? Nope. I mean, are they in the water? I hope not. Where do you go again? Right, I'm going get back to Dagon Fell here. Hmm. Well, I obviously don't want to go in the water to get anything. That's not something that would particularly appeal at all.
I don't even know what I'm looking for. But I still haven't found it. Hmm. There's a sog in there somewhere. Yeah, if these are things that are under the water, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. At least not yet. Until uh, I can get um, some... Uh, huh. My under or my submarine spell going. I wonder if there are uh, like a plant or something. I'm seeing plants down there. I might just save it and go and check for my own, this is not canon, for my own um, curiosity. I bet that's it, isn't it? That's what that's what it is. It's these. Yeah. So it's a, it's a starfish. Whoa! Bye. Yeah, something about I just wanted to see what it was. And uh, yeah, it's them, but... So, Karish would have asked, you know, so, so what is an eye star thing? And the guy would have said, well, are these things right at the bottom? And Karish is like, nope. I don't think so. So, I think what we might do then is restore our magicka and go back to Dagenfell. Because Dagenfell <coughs> was quite an interesting place for Karish. And we didn't spend too much time there because we had a, a bigger thing going on. But, now we can go to the Imperial Chapel. We can pray at the shrine. And we can go back there and have a little look around. Plus it's all icky and rainy here and I don't particularly like it. Maybe later, much later, when we get the uh, submarine spell on the go, which will be like a shield spell plus uh, water breathing. Currently we've just got that. So that, that isn't it. Um, I suppose I could... No. No. No, 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 no. Oh, wait. I'm going the wrong way. I mean, I might put Swift Sue on it as well. So it's more like an underwater -y thing rather than just a, a bubble. Anyway, I want to travel to Dagenfell, please. Something wants to kill me. It's probably a... Oh god, it's you, isn't it? Can we just not? You know? It's just really tedious. I know. So... Uh, I don't know, we'll try and kill this thing. If it's stuck, I'm going to just kill it with the console. Well, I could kill it with stuff that I've got, I suppose, but it seems a bit of a waste. This is the roll on touch. Uh, target. Okay, that woke it up. They get it. Thank you. Nice! Okay, brilliant. So we heard about a, um, hello. Dr. Lawrence Harmony, I'm looking for this dude. Find his town on the east side of town. Yeah, let's go and talk to this dude. So east is this one? I think. Oh god, it's raining here as well. Uh. I'm sure it was over there. Maybe not. This is east, right? No, it's that way. <laughs> anyway, I, th I thought, like... I got all my directions bundled up. Tower on the east side of town. Listen to that thunder. Blimey. Could be that one. Let's go to there. It's, I know where it is, but Karish doesn't. This is a, a tower on the edge of town. Oh, 
really took a turn for the worst. This and there's another one there as well. Now this one is vacant, Karish. But it's all the way up here, man. You know? Oh god. We found we found like somewhere fairly good. I mean this is this has got like lava in it and stuff. Double Bonnie. Because you are blighted, aren't you, sir? No, I don't want to touch you. I don't want to touch you. The way it charged towards me, I'm just assuming it was blighted. I don't want to touch you. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Disgusting. Ugh. Uh oh. Oh, it's got some stuff in it. It's gonna jump on this. <laughs> oh, it's worth 50, so I'll take it. And that is spell absorption. Worth 250, so I'll take it. And I'm not over encumbered, that's nice. I'll sell them at the local place. They're just minor trinkets. And now I'm curious about what's over there. Well done, Bony. Nothing. Alright, well that was worth coming in for. I wonder why no one had picked them up before. Maybe this tower isn't so vacant, eh, Karish? And yeah, it's kind of a nice place to, to live, but there's no furniture, and go up there last. It's in Dagon Fell, which not the nicest place, is it? Hello! Not so vacant. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, so you're an half-dressed orc who seems to have some interest in Dwemer's stuff, eh? Do you believe I've seen an eye elf in such a drank out drank outfit in some time? How can I help you? I think this guy gives like the best unarmored training, I think. He can like give you like 100 uh, unarmored. What about Dagonfell? Dag All Dagonfell wants is to be simple, a simple fishing village, but recent events, activities of Sork Vild the Raven are a cause for concern. Alright, so I'm still looking for him. Hmm, what do you do then? I'm a barbarian. We heard about that. Yeah, well you've got, you know, you, I'm not going to steal your collection. I've already got all this anyway. You know, my collection is better than yours, but nice for the scarab plans. You're obviously a fellow uh, adventurer and uh, lover of muffins and bugs, kind of, and glamour stuff. So yeah, alright, Kaigol, you're okay. Even though you do live around rats. So yeah, good for him. God damn it! Guards! <laughs> Guards! Oh no. It's got stuck. It's also really, really icky still. Well, here's a tower. Probably no idea about, about that cliff racer, but I think it has got stuck. So maybe it's this one. Spoiler warning. It is this one. Oh my god. Bony. Help me! So, Bonnie can take care of a blighted rat. <coughs> Good to know. God damn it. Well. So, this is his tower. So, there's no reason to suspect that this guy is hostile. It's much like uh, Baladas, 
we hear about some dude. And we're like, right, well, it's he lives, uh, a wizard who lives on the edge of town. But then suddenly, oh my god, we're getting attacked, so. Spike! Do stuff. So this is going to be pretty tough, this area, because well, it just is. Wow, Spike is, like, Ooh. so badass. Look at that. I mean, this guy's... Oh! Whoa! Okay. Well, we'll just let you, uh... Waste all your magic, huh? Go on, Spike. Stab her in the back. Oh, fine. You know what? I'm going to deal with her myself. I'd rather not use Magicka, though. Okay. Killer, 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 killer. Go away. <laughs> okay, two down. Two to go, I believe. So these guys have some pretty nice stuff on them. Extravagant shoes for, and then a Dwemer short sword, which I might keep for later. A uh, bunch of random charms. A frost eater robe. This is our second magical robe. Not as good as the first one, now. We can't carry it currently. And a ring. Again, it's worth taking for the uh, just to sell it. Excuse you. Uh, all right, that one. <laughs> um, should we drop some more of our common stuff? You know, we're becoming less and less needy of our common stuff. I really should go back to town and sell stuff, shouldn't I? That's what I'll do. I'll go now. Makes sense. We're gonna find some stuff in there and I won't be able to take it. <laughs> and that'll just be frustrating. Because currently it looks like that area is left untouched by the mods. See a lot a lot of areas have been um, nerfed. Like that summoner dude we found that one time. But um so I heard in the comments. But I know there's some pretty nice stuff in there and I kinda of want Carriage to have it. You know, he's got no reason not to go back there. You know, he's not really... He's not taking a hit in there, I think, really, so... Oh, wait. I don't know where I'm going. It's, it's not quite here, is it, that I'm looking for. It's outside. I can still sell you some stuff, though, can I? Uh, so, I've got some random stuff, like, yeah, the fatigue I don't need. The key I do. This, alright, I'll get rid of that. Now, I know I said that I'm not going to sell stuff to you guys because of... You don't deserve it and everything, but at the same time, I kind of have to sell something to these guys. Books! They don't even read them. That is not a surprise. And these little trinkets don't really matter too much to Karish. Dispel was good. I remember using that. Fire damage, fire damage, what we got here. Intervention is good. Very useful to have. Just been using that. Levitation, just in case, spell absorption. Now, nah. mind you, that's taken us over. So we'll take back that, and that will do. But you're not the only place who sells stuff, are you? The rain sounds a lot worse than what it is. I think this, yeah, this place, I think, is a better trade. And maybe you can do books as well. Do you people read at all? I need that. What oh, I just... Oh, no, I need that. You do. That's good. and surprising. We need the Hanging Gardens. We need the Egg of Time. And... 
yeah, not much else. But that has given us quite a bit of inventory space back. That'll do, I think. Actually, we'll go for five, because we're a popular, nice guy. Everyone loves us. Okay. Back to the tower. Which is over there, I think. I think? Is it? Fancy ho hovering there, because I don't want to walk. Carriage is lazy. Still a cliff racer out there that wants to kill us. Which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. <clears throat> what a horrible, horrible day. I'm glad I got my raincoat. Maybe I should have changed my robe at some point. No, I've, I've started not doing that so much. Got a bit lazy on the whole fashion sense thing. So I think I need to fix that up, really. Anyway. So I don't think I've got enough inventory space to gather all this stuff up that's in here. If the, if the game, if the mods left it as the game default. I don't think I even want everything now. So he's got nothing. Look at do I have a mace? I don't know. I might come back for them sometime. A scroll, scarab schematics, a scroll, and then a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, lots of Dwemer stuff in here. And a limeware flask, which is... You know, these are really uh, quite good for the... That's actually been nerfed a bit, I think, but... Um, quite good value to weight ratio thing going on there with that. Uh, Alright, well we check out the bottom floor before we continue up. That is traditional. That's just how you do dungeons. Even Karish knows that. And what's around here? Yeah, you've only got Nechi armor. Although we did he just here, that was pretty good. I need to get rid of that as well. I'll just drop it. We'll pretend we saw it. <laughs> Spike! You are my main man, and very, very, um, oh, you're healing yourself. You're actually using that sword. Though, rather pointlessly. Or futilely, I suppose. Should we, should we back up Spike, should we back up Spike with some scaly? No need, I should have, I should have, I should have relied on you, Spike, I do apologise. So... Okay, what have we got here? We've got a couple of coins. Again, I, I hope that the uh, volume... volume. Practice is alright. I'll put this on for you, but it's fine for me. So if it isn't alright this episode, I'm going to have to have a investigation about stuff. So this dude has nothing at all apart from this. The Saint's Black Sword, which heals and restores fatigue. It's not really a carish thing, but it's something that maybe at some point I can come back and get. Because carish doesn't use weapons, as we know. Uh, I believe it was worth more than that in the original game, but then there's no real need for it to be, is there? So, and finally. This dude. Hi. So I was wondering if we could have a word. Probably not. You will die where you stand. Fa. My summon is better than yours. What should we do? Should we uh dump spear? We got a bomb worker as well. I oh, know different. Um, oh, we absorbed something. That's good. Not fireball and stuff. I was thinking about something. Oh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get the spear on the go. Wherever it is. That'll spear there. No! 
I love how he's casting that with all the same. How many of those have you got, dude? There's only so many. Alright, you're dead. Okay, now he's yeah, now he's summoning again, so. I'm watching over there. That dude is taking a pounding, mind you, so am I. Well done, Carriage. Well done. Right, we'll use this, I think. And we'll get this in the go. How does it feel? Oh, we go. We're poisoned. Well, that's easily fixed, isn't it? Actually, should we use a spell for that? Don't know if I can even find it. That's clever, Pellet. Now we'll just um. I got these for a reason, never. So might as well. Go on, Spike. Finish him off. This summoner has met his match. He's only got one. The amount of magic this guy has is quite immense. And, um. Alright, let's just finish him off. Him. So you like summons, do you? I don't think any more is necessary, really. <laughs> There, finally! That dude was tough. But, no match for the mighty Karish. Alright, so, we got some stuff in here. Go team! Well done, everyone. Well done. Alright, so what have we got? We got some icky alchemy stuff. Oh, we got a journal and we got Corpse Preparation Volume 3. Hmm. Volume 1. Haha! <laughs> it's only a silver dagger. It's not a Daedric dagger anymore. Fair enough. Alright, there's Volume 2. So we must have a Volume 1 first, which we shall read first. Yeah. Nope. I'm going to leave that. Take your gold, though. Well, haven't you got a bunch of stuff? Let's see. Restore Magicka. We'll have that now. Restore health. We don't even need that really, but hey. Belt of nimbleness. It's worth 125 and 45 is agility. He could have done with that, I guess. Did he even use it? No, he might have wanted to do because he fell over quite a lot and 45 strength. We'll take these. There's also a silver battle axe. And the mask of Clavicus Vile. 14,000 gold, 45 personality, 20 points on self. Can't move. Of course I can't move. I might drop this torch. There's his first journal. Alright, so I think we'll read these now. There's all these cop preparation things. He had the whole set, didn't he? And yep, he was certainly into his alchemy and stuff, but I ain't touching those. Yeah. Um, Alright, so we'll give these a read. Today I visited Tel Arun and spent a pleasant hour discussing business with the Dunmer, Seville Imran. I purchased a young Breton woman under the illusion she was to clean and cook for me because the last slave ran off while collecting ingredients from Dagon Fell. She was a pretty young thing and it was a shame to snuff her out of life when I returned. But my work demands a fresh corpse and in these times and the bureaucracy that goes with it makes it very difficult to acquire such a specimen without these means. I have stripped and cleaned the body, and other than the, meth uh, and other than the methods of death, a slim dagger through the neck pushed into the brain, she appears a perfect subject. I have placed the body in a vat of fresh salted water to preserve it, and to prevent the smell of death that will always lingers, that always lingers in the air several days after a fresh kill. I shall leave the tower on further business for several weeks now, and hope she is ready when I return. My return from Skyrim was long and arduous, but my, uh, to my cheer, I find my specimen ready for her embalming process. After several hours, I now have a fine subject to work with. She is bandaged and indeed modified, and she will be a loyal and strong servant for my needs. I must arrange for a carriage of her body to my island refuge so that we are not to be disturbed during the summoning. 
My minions have disguised the body by placing it in a large trunk and wrapping it in guar skin. They will easily pass the traders the ship. Uh, Shipmasters of Dragon fell, and the goods will not be examined further. The slave girl, Marielle, has been placed on the altar, and I have dressed her in her clo and, and and I have dressed in her clothes, consumed her organs, and drank from the chalice. Uh, a circle made from strips of guar skin has been arranged around the altar and the marks of Ake placed inside it. I must bless my dagger before I cut the throat of a guar and its blood be my sacrifice, a life for a life. Success! Ariel is indeed everything I had hoped and will do my bidding on demand. She has been dressed and cloaked and although walks quite stiffly, she should pass uh, as a sick passenger on our return to Dagonfell and my tower. My conjuration skills are surpassing that of the great necromancers of history, and soon I may command my own army of the dead and rid this land of the mages' guild once and for all. Insert evil laughter. With the aid of the helm of Clavicus Vial, Morel has managed to walk um, the town of Dragonfell without any concern from those meddling imperial guards or the local townsfolk. It's only a matter of time before I discover how to enchant a hundred, no, a thousand such helms and ravage all of Vanfell with my army. It may just be my macabre sense of existence, but I'm beginning to find Mariel quite alluring in a strange sort of way, and my thoughts could even defile the laws of necrophilia, let alone necromancy. I must be careful and take from her the helm, or I may find myself unable to work with her any further. Dude. All right, let's just get rid of this freaking torch, because, you know. It's volume one. Wait, what's that volume? Where's volume two? Oh, it's on the desk over here. I'm becoming extremely distraught in the fact that I cannot find any reason why Marielle is continuing to display her own thought patterns and even refusing some of my commands. If this carries on, I will have no option but to destroy my own creation, although it would leave me with a heavy heart. Oh, she kissed me. I had no control of my mind as she held me and pushed me against her cold, decayed shell of her body and pressed her hard blue lips against mine. I could taste the flavour of death on her lips, but it was powerless to push her away. I must end this now before I become the servant of Marielle. Yes, her power over me is too great and my feelings are mixed and confused. I've decided not to exterminate her life, but instead to take her to one of the islands north of here and maroon her there for eternity. But I must first retrieve the helm from her possession. I told Marielle of her inner beauty and demanded that she give me the helm so I may see... How did she kiss him with the helm on? Uh, see... Uh... <laughs> so all could see she was indeed a princess of the night. To my astonishment, she did as I asked and gave it to me without a thought. I have told her we must travel north where we can be together and she seems to agree. I hope her spirit has its own heart or I shall be doomed. We have taken passage on a small ship from Dagonfell. Mariel is cloaked again to hide her body and head, but now her walk is that of a woman and not of a summoned creature or necromancer. Something went wrong, very wrong indeed. Maybe the Gua I sacrificed was not good enough. Next time I shall... Use a person to ensure I have pleased the Worm King. Only one day's travel from Dagon Fell, I have found a suitable island. It is un 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 uninhabited and harsh, which makes it perfect for my plans. Only a fool would come here in the future, and not what Mariel would do to them on that day. I have paid the shipmaster handsomely and wait for my return, as he has agreed. I will take Mariel deep into the island, then cast a recall to return to the beach and quickly leave the way we came. I wonder if she's about then. That lady. But yeah, you're, I, I think we did right to get rid of him. He was, uh, he had all sorts of issues, he did. Alright then. Onwards. So, oh yeah. So we got this. As you do. Um, and I also want to take this. From my collection of trinkets. This carriage has no use for whatsoever. That's 12 though. That's quite heavy. 12 over, I mean. I don't know if I can... Jettison 12. Well, 9 now. That's still quite a lot. I don't have a lot of food left. Uh, there's a lot of potions. But the precious, precious potions. Does this do paralysis? No. But do I need 5 of them? 
Besides, this could be my tower now. Hmm. I think what's weighing me down quite a lot is the potions that I have, especially all these. I mean, this is Ted right now. Restore health, restore health, restore fatigue. I'll drink that. Alright, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Inventory sorting, everyone. Isn't it great? We've got a lot of robes, a common shirt and stuff, you know, I mean... Maybe I'll keep one of everything. I'm not gonna keep all, like, like get rid of my shoes, though. So common, common, common. I don't have a common robe, but it's okay. This is kind of a common robe, even though it's a magical one. Five. <laughs> Five. Uh, the soap I need. That's not very heavy anyway. That's not very heavy. Not, not heavy, not heavy. Uh, not heavy. It's, it's amazing how everything, like, like just uh, mounts up. Isn't it? Quite surprising. Oh, I don't know. What should we get rid of? It's just this as well. The egg of time and everything. I need to get back to Caius's and then I'll be alright. Ah. No, no, they're expensive. No, I need to keep them. Expensive, expensive. Oh, I don't know. What am I going to drop? Oh, God. The silver dagger right... Uh, I can always find another silver dagger. Besides, it'll be blunt and stuff now anyway. Okay. So... Uh, sorted. Oh, god damn it! Eat some stuff, Carish. Eat more stuff. Eat all your food. It's ridiculous, I know. But... Oh, come on. And that. Game, stop messing with me. I'm not going to eat a pearl. We'll drop the resin. I don't know why I had that. And now, me. There we go. All right, now we're. Going to definitely go back to Caius's. No doubt about it. How will I do that? How? What's the best way of doing that? Uh, huh. Catch a boat, maybe? It's getting late. When we nearby. It seems pretty late to me. We might come back to Dagonfell at some point. I know my recall spell... Leads me to um, tell Brunara. It's probably the best way of doing it, actually. That's what we'll do. Glen <laughs> PM. Should we have a rest first before we uh, carry on? No, we'll get back to Belmora. <laughs> so we sort out that sorted out that Raven dude. I mean, Karish, I mean, you know, he's, he's barring people now. He went into that dungeon and, uh, no problem, really. Very tough NPCs as well in there, with two unique items. Desperately, desperately need the, uh, stronghold. Hello. It's still gonna be a while though, because even when I get the souls, I have to wait in game. So yeah, a bit of a pain. Hello. I would like to travel to Blamara, please. So we got two thousand gold sat there. Tidings and good wishes to you, friend. Um, we'll sell stuff in the morning. Mind you, I don't have that much to sell. There's only like the um, a couple of gems. I think once we'll get rid rid of the mask of Cavicus Vile and the other thing. Do you have something? You know we're gonna have like sixteen episodes of carry carrying everything to his um. We'll rest first. Uh, his stronghold from Caius's place. Backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. <laughs> That's going to be a fun episode. I wish to I wish to rent the bed, please. Yes, please. I'm not going to buy anything from you, I'm afraid, because I, I 
I, I just collapsed under the weight of some salt rice. Lovely. Good rest. Have we got anything else left to eat? Yeah, we got a bit of skull. We'll have that. And a bit of bread. Yeah, we'll eat the rest of our uh, supplies and then we can stock up again today once we've dumped all this heavy stuff off. You may speak. So, uh, you know, Karish wouldn't really have any interest in using this sort of things, but he realizes that they're powerful items, you know. The game tells me, I, you know, that it's worth 5,000 gold, so Karish must realize it's worth 5,000 gold. And, um, you know, you know stuff's worth a lot. You're not just going to leave it around, are you? Speak up. I said, you're not going to leave it around. God. Poor Caius. And no, by the way, I still haven't done the main quest, so don't ask me. Well met. Yeah, quite a lot of stuff on here now. Let's put the helm on the chair. Just ignore that. And I, I like the... Uh, I don't know if it is retextured. Maybe it's just the... Um, the glowy things off it now, but... Right, so we need to buy some extra equipment, don't we? I mean, there's a Dwemer dagger there that we could be using, but... Nah. Let's go and uh, buy a new dagger and stuff. It doesn't have to be silver, of course, but... Karish can afford a new silver dagger, so we'll see if there's a one at the uh, razor hole. And sell some stuff at the alchemist. Buy some food round about town and then check our journal and see what the hell we're doing because I've completely forgotten about everything else. I do believe we're re returning to. Oh, yes, we, did, we wanted the uh, scarab plans, didn't we? We can actually dump a lot of all extra stuff off there and I'm going to do that right now because there's. Oh, but there's the book. I need to take the book to her and, and, and maybe to Asfat. Let's take her to Asfat. The egg of time and stuff. Hanging gardens and that kind of thing. Hello. I've got egg of time. I might want to take these books to another Dwemer scholar. Perhaps one of the old Tilvani. Yeah, you say that, but I don't know if you're correct. Uh. uh Okay, so we've done this before. I might I might drop them off then, these books, because they are really, really, really heavy. You know, like as practically as heavy as that sword. Don't have any books to her, apart from the ones I just mentioned. That one and that one? No, okay. Have you got a silver dagger? No. Uh, where's the person you buy stuff from? Okay. Hi. Looks like you might. There we go. Six. Is that because it's really crappy quality? Fine. Ten then. Still, that's weird because it still cost me 36 and its value is 40. So that was cheaper to buy and repair than it would be to buy if it was fully repaired. Alright, game. Whatever you say. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm going to hold on to these books. Five. Well, you know, it's better than nothing. Don't think we need anything from you. Forty-five for those. That seems like a really bad price. I know. I think Karish is pretty tired. You know, his fatigue is quite low, but that was kind of a shoddy deal, really. Anyway, no.
Yeah, Tommy Scarif thing. Let's go to see Edwina. I don't know if I can um, advance in the Mages Guild to get free travel. Not that it matters too much, it's like 12 a time, but let's ask. Ooh, yeah. We're now a magician. So can I just use these now? Yeah, I really that I don't actually need them, actually. Ah, it's because uh, the expansion wasn't affected by the changes with the other mod. So that's why there was 10 in there as opposed to just 2. Still, I'm going to leave them because I don't need them. And uh, it'll just weigh me down more. Oh, come on! What do you need to be? Because next I'm going to be like the uh, um, a warlock. I mean, how many is there, you know? Magician seems pretty high up. Anyway. So 36. I'm doing enough for you people. Stupid Mages Guild. If it wasn't for Edwina, I wouldn't bother. It's all it's all like Oh, I want to talk to this person. I want to gather flowers. I want to gather mushrooms. Edwina, where are you? There you are. Yes, I have. Thanks. My husband. Duties then. Oh, I've actually been here. I've heard that the miners of the nicest egg mine broke into the ruins of Bethamas. They have. Officially, the nicest egg mine was closed because of the blight, but I heard the miners broke into the lost ruin of Bethamas. I've also heard that they found a um, plan similar to the blueprints you brought before. Go to the nicest egg mine and bring me back the blueprints, plans or blueprints you find. I might already have them on me. Oh, God. Is there... Alright, well, it's unlikely I've sold them or anything, so we have to go back to Caius's and pick them all up and then bring them back to you. I think there was like a golem or something, or maybe a bucker. God, I don't know. We're going to have to find it. Stupid mages guild. Alright, Caius, I'm coming back. <laughs> Such useless creatures. I know. I'm going to buy some food while I'm at it. Karish needs some uh, sustenance. Uh, let's go over here and buy some stuff. I think there's a nice place we can... Not the scribble scroll. I think it's here. No, it's not you either. Well, you might have something. Let's have a look. Hello. I I'm looking for some food. Nope. Okay, never mind. Right, I come out here and I'm lost. I love that. I have no idea where I am. Is it here? There's a trade house there. What's this? This is uh, delicacies. It's what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This kind of stuff. Let's have a look. So we'll buy some of the basics. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get some salt rice. Like, I don't know. Five or four or whatever number it lands on. Three. Get some bread on the go. Can't go wrong with that. And then we'll get some... Uh, some root to, to, to nibble on, I guess. Yeah, okay, we'll get some of that. Uh, uh, Guam meat six. Okay, crab meat, yeah. I haven't had that in a while. Uh, and uh, a bit of green petals. Ash yam. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have all them. I think Harry should like some and some... Marshmallow. It's one of them. And what's this? What's that? That is some sweet pulp. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. Okay, feel better now. Alright, Caius. I'm coming to see you again. Some sort of schematics or something in the area that I've already been at. I require them. Just let me root through all the stuff that I've dumped in your place. It's a foggy, foggy day in Balmora. It was a foggy day in Dagonfell as well. We might go back to Dagonfell at some point. You know, there's a lot of Dwemer ruins around there, but obviously Karish has got a lot on his plate.
Uh, so yeah, we're going to have to see what's here and see if I remember what we got there. So let's have a look. You seem like so, very good company. Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. What's that? Satchel pack? No, a scroll, scroll, scroll. I mean, there's that. Which I know I picked up there. Right, what's that thing under there? Alright, just a minute. What's, what's this? What is, what is, it's just a scroll. Okay, and there's a right bracer there. More scrolls. This thing there as well. No, it's just a scroll as well. Okay, so I think it's divine metaphysics. Possibly. With pleasure. Please, I don't think I've ahead. sold anything I'm Dwemer always. related. And that's kind of all there is. A scroll, 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 scroll. Braces and stuff and yeah, random. I've already got a mace so I don't need to get that other one from uh, back on Dagon Fell. Alright, I'm going to take everything that I've got and hope, and hope that it's right. If not, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do because I don't know where I'd have put it otherwise. But uh, I might have already shown a divine, divine metaphysics, but I'm not going to worry about it until I know I need to worry about it. So I mean, this, the end of this episode is going to be either a massive success as, yay, you know, we found the thing that she asked for even before we knew where to look for it, or I've lost it. One of those two. Which is it going to be? I don't know. It's going to take a long time to go and find out. It's going to go down here and round here and then down here. Ugh. And up here. Around there. Down there. Around here. And all the way across this massive room. Massive room. And then we're going to travel to Aldrin. Oh, man. I should really set my mark spell at Caius's place as well. I mean, there's very little reason why I shouldn't. You can get everywhere from Balmora, which is why everyone uses it as a... Sorry! Hub. Okay, here we go. God damn it. Alright. So, I'm going to have to... Yeah, see, there's that. Uh, yeah. I did. Oh, wait a minute. Egg of time. Ask him. But he's going to take me back to that dude who I didn't ask about it for in that Dwemer ruin. Am I right? Hi. So, yes. Hmm. So I've been there. Maybe I didn't pick some up or something. I might have to go and review that footage because Kara should remember. He's not absent-minded at all. May I help you? But yes, somewhat annoying that I've been there and, and messed about with stuff and. Uh, don't have what I need. Okay, yeah, so he says uh, he doesn't know. Brilliant. So I'm not really sure. Let's check everything else with you because I've got everything on me now. The Divine Metaphysics Gardens and Divine Metaphysics. Who is both a wizard and a scholar. So maybe Baladas. Maybe. Um... Alright, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm running out of time, obviously, because this episode is longer than it should be. Anyway, I'm spoiling y'all. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Alright, I'll, I'll set a, a mark here. Nice. And we're going to head... Where am I going? Where am I going? What's the plan? What is the plan? How do I get to Baladas really quickly? Through the Telvani teleporters. And how do I get through the Telvani teleporters? Well, how do I get to them? I gotta to go to Telvanara. Because I'm just gonna take all these books to him as well. Travel to Cedric Maru. And uh, then we're gonna go here. Yes. 
Yeah, yes. I'm gonna go to the council chamber because I know where it is in there. It's rainy. It would be, wouldn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what. It'd be definitely not to uh, pray at the shrine while I just walk past it. Do, do, do. Walking. It's for peasants. Have we got a raincoat on? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, thanks. Alright, we're off over there. Oh, come on, come on, up a bit. We're off over there. Just curious to see what Balados is going to say about all these books now that I have them on me, and then I will end the episode. And I know, we'll see what happens after that. I shall ask your advice, so I might just look some up myself about what was uh, in that ruin that Edwin is looking for. Now I just slow myself down. God damn it! Rain cloud, rain coat. Sparkles! Okay. Bloody weather, anyway. Oh, not yet, not yet. Soon. Wait a minute, I'm sure it was wrong. Oh god, is it here? Yeah, it's here, okay. Thought I got lost there. Uh, was it this one? Pretty sure, yeah. Yep. There's his... His, his mates, his friends. Let's see if it's this guy who knows anything about them. I'm not sure if I'm holding much hope up here, but... Hello. Might as well now that we've got them all. We is like the bestest chums, aren't we? Does it remember me? Yeah, okay, I brought you that. I brought you that. Ah! Yes, I can now translate these books. The first uh, one is Buthand Menach. Uh, refutation of the popular theory by Nervaz from Nervaz time. The Dwemer believed that using the power of Locken's heart, it was an un unjustifiable risk. The Egg of Time contains Thun's arguments against this idea, many of which are quite compelling. The next book, Divine Me Metaphysics, is an explanation of how the Dwemer tried to make a new god, an Amindium, uh, using Krennic's tools and sacred tones of Locken's heart. So I got I got journal update. Hooray! That's good, right? Get this books of myself. Perhaps you will find other books of German language. I think I've done that. I think I've got all the stuff I need for that. So that's good. So we got an update on that, which is nice. So if we go into options and then quests and 
Um, let's see, Mystery of the Dwarves. That's a major um, update. This is what happened to the dwarves. So, uh, so, uh, what What if that is it? I don't know. I know I, I'm keeping playing here, but... <laughs> that works. Uh, so, what if... Um, hi guys, how are y'all doing? Is it still raining? Well, it's only been like a couple of seconds, hasn't it? Hang on, I'll just, I'll just recall. What if we go back to Trebonius now? Where am I? What am I doing? And tell him our findings. Will that be enough? I don't know. Whee! Uh, Vivek, thank you. All right, I'm listening. All right, let's have a look. Excuse me, sir, but I might have found some stuff. I did! Oh, let me see those books. Magician. Oh yes, of course, the egg of time is quite obvious in its uh, descriptions of the things that happened. Yes, of course, it's all quite clear to me. I prefer that you wrote a report that uh, simplified your findings, but I trust that you have indeed solved the mystery. Yes, you solved a little dwarven mystery quite easily, I'm sure. When the recent troubles have passed, I have more duties for you. Okay, you may have more. All right, so well, that's it then. Hooray! I realised something to brag about. Right. So <laughs> we completed the quest. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> we didn't get anything for it, but we completed the quest. I don't know if if Karish would be quite quite too of too pleased with this, you know. I mean, I'm not going to attempt this dude now, but I'm kind of curious about your thoughts about how Karish would react to this. So, you know, I brag about. Greetings to you. A pleasure to meet you. You know, if I'm going to kill this dude, it's going to be now, or maybe later. I don't know, but we did all that work, and he's just like, "Oh, I can go and brag about stuff." I'm going to leave it now because, you know, I'm all excited and stuff because we finished the quest and everything. It's like, uh, even though I got absolutely nothing for it, I am still really stoked. And I guess that's just a testament to how difficult that quest is and, and you know, how satisfying it can be to, to just do something for the sake of doing it. So hooray for us. Well done, Karish. Now this guy is going to take our findings and brat about it to people in Monhold. What should we do about that? I could, I could attack him. Uh, can I attempt it? He does have a rather overpowered amulet, though. Which I can't, I may or may not use, you know. That's only if, of course, the game hasn't changed it. Uh, the world hasn't changed it, which is likely it has, because it was really overpowered. But, I wouldn't be killing him for that, even though it would be a nice side effect. I'd be killing him for the, uh, just for the fact of what he said. And I don't think, you know, if we got him to attack us... It wouldn't really affect our standing with the Mage's Guild. And we don't want to proceed with the Mage's Guild anymore. Um, apart from Edwina's thing. But that wouldn't really affect this. So, while I'm really like justifying attacking him. And, you know, getting him to fight us so we can kill him. <laughs> and there's no better time than this. Um, I'm going to wait for you guys to let me know what you think Karish would do in this situation. Whether he would just walk away and forget it. So if the knowledge that he found it. Or whether he would take exception to this blackguard and think, right, once and for all, I'm going to get rid of you. Stupid Mages Guild prick. We'll see. <laughs> Alright then, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It has been very productive. The only thing that is missing is Edwina's little quest, which I shall look up. Um, and we'll see what happens with that. So, until next time. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this bumper episode, as they all tend to be these days. And I'll see you next week, I hope. Take care. Toodling.